and welcome to the X22 Report. My name is Dave and this is episode 243 and today's date is December 19th, 2013 and the title of this episode is The White House Security Barriers Are Being Upgraded for 365 Days a Year Protection. And who are they protecting the White House from? It is most likely you. Before I get started with the economic collapse news, I just want to welcome all those people that subscribed on YouTube who are first listening to me on YouTube. If you come to the x22report.com site, I always post uh, the reports between 5 and 7 o'clock. First, it is audio. You just go to the home page, scroll down a little bit, and you will see the report. Just hit the, the, there's a circle with an arrow in there. Just hit play, and the audio will the audio will start playing. If you want to download the MP3, you can do that also. And um, if you've never visited the site, um, I have the the timeline of the economic collapse. I'm trying to create the story of what's been happening. And if you click on the economic collapse tab up top, it'll bring you to that. During the day, I I, um, upload uh, different articles and comment them comment on them and that is in the sentinel alert section and um, I also have inflation deflation I track a couple products of uh, the prices going up or down and I have resource documents and we also have the people which is the forum of like-minded people Um, you can join up it is completely free Uh, you need no money no credit card nothing just pick a a name out uh, that you want to be called by need an email address I do not email you anything from this or whatsoever this is just so you can get your uh, password um, once you register and um, then you can change your password to whatever you want if you don't want to sign up at this time because you're hesitant or things like that just go there read whatever other people are saying and then when you get more comfortable go ahead and sign up and um, you can talk to other people um, for those people who donated to the site, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you like what I do, you have a couple dollars, you know, um, and y- you want this, you want me to continue doing this. Um, you can donate. Otherwise, give me a like. Um, if you're listening on YouTube or if you're coming to the site, um, just li- this lets some people know that you know, oh, this is something interesting. A lot of people like it, and um, pe- more people come over, and we wake more people up. Let me get into the economic collapse news. Now we've talked a lot about unemployment. We talked a lot about the economy and how everything is an illusion and we look at the real numbers of what is going on not from the corporate media or from the government because we understand they're manipulating all the calculations and they changed a lot and they always spin it in a way they want people to believe that the economy is getting better and if we look at the initial claims right now of the people who are applying for uh, unemployment, they rose around 10,000 to 379,000. And they expected around uh, around 336,000, um, and they didn't reach, uh, they were above the expectations. And we have to look at this, and of course the corporate media, is they're blaming it on the holiday of volatility, and uh, because people are leaving work, people are coming on, it's very hard to track, and, and it's very difficult to do this, but we know the real reason. And this is just one way of knowing that the unemployment numbers really do not make sense, because we have to understand in December uh, 28th of this year that 1.3 million people are on the emergency unemployment compensation, and this is the unemployment that has been expen- extended by the federal government, and Congress is looking into it right now to see if they like to extend it or not extend it. But if they do not extend the unemployment insurance, these 1.3 million people are going to fall off uh, the unemployment uh, report that the BLS puts out. Now, this doesn't mean that they're employed. (laughs) Actually, it's worse. They're still unemployed, and they're not receiving unemployment. So it's a double whammy. But they're going to fall off, and the government's going to come out and say, hey, the unemployment just went from 7% to 6 point whatever percent. And we have Mike Faroli from uh, JP Morgan out there saying, if these people fall off, Uh, the unemployment rate may drop up to 0.8 percentage points. And this puts the Fed exactly where it wanted to be. Now, again, 
These are manipulated numbers. These are numbers that are made up to fit the Fed's illusion. And everyone's like, oh my God, wow, we just hit you know 6.2% unemployment. This is amazing. But these people were unemployed, receiving unemployment insurance. They're still unemployed, not receiving unemployment insurance, and not counted. Hmm. Doesn't make sense, does it? But again, the rest of the country does not realize this, and they will believe that, wow, the country is in full recovery. Here we are, 6.2%. Incredible. Now, since we know this is not true, and Bernanke left the back door uh, for him to open and get out of the taper situation, he said that if the whole tapering is number dependent and if numbers change, he can always back out of the taper and increase QE if needed. So, if the government does not extend unemployment insurance, he is going to taper and taper quite a bit because this is where he wanted to be. Do you think the country can survive on him bringing the tapering down 10 billion, 20 billion, 60 billion, 85 billion, and just taking it away? I don't. And we know it can't because the Fed is the entire market. They are pumping in 85 billion. Again, the tapering hasn't started. That starts in January. They are pumping this money into the banks to buy the toxic real estate. They are pumping this into the treasury bonds to buy the bonds because guess what nobody else wants them once they remove this the banks will not be able to push that money into the stock market and make it go higher and higher and higher the fed will no longer be able to buy the treasury bonds so who's going to buy them now well, pretty much nobody the government will be won't be able to borrow hmm this is a difficult situation for them. So they will need some type of an event where they can show that they need to increase quantitative easing. And it will be easier for them to have this blamed on another country. And it will be better for them because they actually want to start a war to cover up this economic collapse because we know that's what, that, what this whole thing is. This Right now, we are in a collapse phase. This is the first part of the collapse that is coming up. What they are going to do is they are going to create a, an event. The markets are going to fall. The bond market's going to start to tumble. The housing market, forget it. That's just collapsing. And they will institute emergency QE, and they will put it into overdrive. Because at this point, nations around the world are going to say, oh, 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 the U.S. is collapsing right now. We need to get rid of the dollar, our treasuries. We do not want this anymore. And we already understand that China has already said this and Russia has already said this. And other uh, smaller nations have reported this. So this is what they're going to do. They are going to put QE in overdrive because they need to ramp up the Treasury bond purchase, they need to ramp up uh, the purchases of the toxic real estate that is happening in the United States because of the housing collapse. So that means there'll be so many more foreclosures. And you have to remember, there is a shadow inventory of homes on the books of the banks, which they are not releasing to the public, because if they did, they would just bombard the inventory with too many homes and the value of the homes would go down and the housing market would have just collapsed. So they are keeping these foreclosed homes back and they're not even calling them foreclosures. I know many people who've been living in their homes, they haven't paid a dime on their house for over a year and a half and the bank has done nothing. No foreclosure, absolutely nothing. They're just looking the other way. So let's look at the housing market right now. Now, we're seeing that the housing market, you know, the sales have finally hit the brick wall. They are starting 
to fall right now. And November existing home sales tumbled um, from 5.12 to 4.9, missing estimates of 5.02. And they also posted the first year-over-year -year decline in 29 consecutive months of increases. And we have to remember that 40% of house buyers actually use a mortgage. And we understand that mortgages are plunging and many people right now are not buying homes. Rates are going up. People have bad credit. Of course, we understand they're giving 100% financing. People are losing work. People can't find work. People are underemployed, and they are just trying to make ends meet. And this is why we're seeing mortgage applications completely decline at this time. And we have to remember the other purchases um, of these homes are 60% in cash. And what we're seeing right now is that the cash buyers are fading out of the housing market at an ever faster pace. So when they leave, all that is left are mortgage buyers. And the mortgage applications are plunging. And what other indicator do we have to prove that this is true? Well, and I've said this in my other reports, J.P. Morgan, Citibank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, 1-800 East Coast West Mortgages have laid off thousands and thousands of people. This was reported in the corporate media. 1-800 East Coast West, East West Coast Mortgages uh, laid off and then they went bankrupt. The others shrunk their departments and removed thousands of people. Now, we have to think to ourselves, if the housing market is rebounding and things are getting better, we would see mortgage applications increasing. We would see mortgage departments in these banks expanding because more people are taking out mortgages. But they already knew what was going to happen because they started the layoffs back in September. And here we are in December they already knew what was happening. Of course, everyone else doesn't because the president in August was out there telling everyone that the housing market is rebounding. We have Biden out there telling everyone the United States is in a recovery, but we know it is not. Yesterday, I reported that Ford said, listen, we're going to readjust our sales figures. Why? Because the European market is in a recession slash depression, and it is just getting worse. We understand that the U.S. economy is sluggish and not showing signs of improvement, and we need to cut our forecast at this time. Another indicator, Caterpillar global sales. Last month we said it was down. Well, this month it is down again, 12%. And now we have um, uh, uh, two times in a row that CAT posted negative retail sales. It wasn't like 1%, 2%. It was like 14 or 15% last time, 12% this time. Things are not looking good at this time. And we have to remember and um, Zero Hedge had a great article, What Happened the Last Time a Major Central Bank Tapered? And if we look back, um, back to, um, and I'll, the graph is on here on this report. Just click on the report title on the, on the x22report.com site. They took the Dow from 1928 to 1929, and they took the Dow right now um, of the current period and where we are. And I have to say, it matches up absolutely perfectly. And right now, they're indicating that we are have a little bit further to go, and we will meet the peak of the Dow in 1929 on January 14th. And we have to remember, the Dow back in uh, 1929, the all-time highs were a you know, roughly hitting around what 375 points, close to 400 points. Today, you know, we're upward of 17,000 points. So we can see the difference right now, and we are getting closer and closer to that top. And if you look at the graph, it is amazing how it does match up. 
Now, in Illinois, and this is about Obamacare, and you, everyone, if you haven't listened to me before, go back to my other reports and listen to what I say about Obamacare and why I believe this is completely not for the people. It is really a cash grab. Um, this is a way to stuff the pockets of the insurance company. It is not put in place to make people healthier or to give them great health coverage. It is a way to get taxes from the people. It is a way to make the health insurance companies wealthier. And again, if anything is for the people, you do not have to penalize businesses and people with a tax if you do not take it. But here in Illinois, um, the exchange warns that thousands upon thousands may have to reapply for Obamacare. Again, we have, they have many, many problems with the website. Things are not working. People's credit cards are being debited um, each month for insurance and sometimes twice a month and they can't stop it and they're not even getting the insurance so the whole thing is a complete mess and disaster and a lot of re people are reporting that this is was done on purpose um, again they only spent around 650 million dollars on this website that doesn't work but people are saying this was done on purpose because they are looking to show that this system doesn't work and they want to go to a one pay type of system now, we understand that all the states are adopting Common Core, and this is to dumb the children down, and um, this is to make them not think and conform and obey um, for what is coming after this next world war, because these central bankers believe that once this war is over, they are going to reset the entire system, start the fiat currency system over again, and they want everyone to fall in line. They don't want people to think on their own. They don't want to have thoughts, and they want everyone to go to these state-sponsored schools and only learn what we're teaching you. And if you look at some of these Common Core books, and I do have children, I actually have four of them, if you look at these books, the history is being rewritten, the Constitution is being rewritten, and they are spitting everything in a completely different way. And right now, they do not want you to homeschool your children. And in Ohio, what they want you to do is they want to, um, they're, they're introducing a bill, uh, Bill 248, because they want to do background checks and investigations um, on the parents to make sure that they can homeschool their own children. And they want to make sure it's in the best interest of the child. Again, these are state people telling you how to teach your children and how to raise your children because they want them in this box conforming and obeying and learning uh, misinformation so when the time comes everyone falls in line and this is why this is being set up at this time there is no other reason for this whatsoever and if you haven't seen Common Core you don't have children you can see exactly what they're doing I mentioned this in my other reports and if not just go on the web to YouTube um, you will see many people out there speaking against Common Core and this Common Core was actually created without the input of any educators or teachers this is driven by money if you do not take the federal system the states do not get the money and what they're doing is they're taking the, the local communities the states out of the picture and they want all ed education federalized controlled by one source and this is what they are trying to do at this time now California right now wants to mandate a kill switch for all smartphones I'm just gonna let everyone know all the upgrades that you received on your smartphone, this kill switch is already there. Don't be fooled. Back in the Boston bombing, they thought they had 
a great idea to stop people from taking pictures because they didn't want these pictures being released all throughout the web and the alternative media because it would show that these two kids had nothing to do with the Boston bombing and they would undercover they would uncover the false flag event so what they did was they shut off the cell towers they went to Verizon AT&T and said listen let's cut the cell service for all these phones and this way we will stop this but what they didn't realize is everyone was taking pictures and when the cell towers were turned back on everyone transmitted and that's why if you remember go back to your news sources the FBI came out and said listen we really need your help we need all your pictures we need you to turn in everything so we can look at them they wanted to see what everyone knew before they decided to go with their false flag event and this is why this is happening but California is saying they would like to reduce smartphone thefts in the United States by creating a kill switch because you know these cell phone thefts is just really getting out of hand and they're really you know it, we need to stop it and the only way to stop it is to have a kill switch on the phone now does this make sense to anyone to, to put a kill switch on the phone it's not going to stop the theft of the phone people are going to still steal it and they're going to bypass whatever application they're going to reset the entire phone it makes no sense what does make sense is this they are trying to make their case and every place is going to do this and they're going to try to pass bills where they want every phone manufacturer to have a kill switch because they've already done it and now they got to make it into law they need the kill switch so when they have these events or if something comes up or things there's martial law they don't want people taking pictures of what's really happening because they don't want the word out because they understand uh, they need to maintain control of the internet they need to maintain control of the alternate alternative media and they do not have any of this control right now and they need to have control and this is why they are trying to push all of this through now we understand and uh, that the NSA is spying on everyone around the world every single country is doing this all the private Western Central Bank countries are doing this because they understand that the collapse is coming they understand that there's going to be martial law they understand there's going to be threats against uh, the people in authority that there could be revolutions that people are going to fight back and they have been spying on everyone plus they want to know what everyone is doing they also want economic information they want insider information they want patent information and they want to know uh, they want to blackmail government officials Supreme Court judges to have laws passed that normally wouldn't be passed like <clears throat> Obamacare now right now hidden in the report of the White House panel on NSA um, which was released uh, that the US government has been using its massive offensive uh, cyber capabilities to change the amounts held in the financial accounts and otherwise manipulating financial systems so really well I'm gonna tell you this right now they have their hands in the banking systems the financial institutions everywhere because they need to have it there because this is going to be used for the cyber attacks they've already planned it out they already know how it's going to happen they already have the ability to manipulate the accounts they already have the ability to siphon off money they already have the ability to bring the market to its knees and this is just coming out now I mean, I know Diane Feinstein and all the other NASA officials were saying we we're only collecting the phone numbers and the locations of the phone numbers. We weren't listening to any conversation, and that is pretty much the extent of what we were doing. Again, you can get the phone numbers and the location of the phone numbers from the phone companies. We don't need billions and billions of dollars on a data center and this program to do that. And the system doesn't work by collecting that you have to listen to the conversations they have to have a specialized integrated system that can put together information and create social profiles um, so it gives them uh, information that can be used and there are keywords that they use so they can hone in on uh, a judge or uh, economic information or 
groups that are planning revolutions or groups that are getting together because they don't agree with the government's uh, beliefs and what they are doing and they believe that the government is becoming tyrannical and this is what the system actually does and they are infiltrating um, all financial aspects of the banks the stock market they're manipulating the systems the way they want it and we can see how this is going to play out when the entire system comes crumbling down now the EU is going to double up their efforts for surveillance using drones for illegal migration through the Mediterranean and this is a great way to get more drones in the air hovering around the Mediterranean because when the war starts it is great to have unmanned aircraft doing reconnaissance spying um, hooking weapons up to the system and this is what they're using right now to say this is why we have drones in the air and the US is doing the same thing around the borders and things like that they're putting massive amount of drones in the air all these drones can be weaponized and eventually they will be used against the United States people now we understand that France um, is in a complete recession even though the president is telling them that they're they're coming out of it their unemployment is increasing debt is skyrocketing and the uh, people are having a very tough time France is down in Mali they're in um, West Africa and they are now deploying unarmed surveillance drones um, which were purchased from the US they're pretty much doing the same thing that the US is doing in Pakistan Yemen they are going to infiltrate and weed out Al Qaeda in this region but what's really happening is they're securing the natural resources because we understand that these nations have a huge amount of gold deposit petroleum natural gas um, uranium and this is why they're actually really down there doing this and they are using these weapons to maintain control in this area and uh, they're out there saying we have led successful counterterrorism attacks in recent days and we will continue to uh, to act to eliminate all traces of Al Qaeda these terrorist groups come and go regroup and then dis disperse so we need to follow them closely with these drones and we I mean this is all these countries now are securing their natural resources um, because they understand that their countries are collapsing at this time now yesterday I reported that the senators are putting forth a bill um, that will implement new sanctions against Iran President Obama was already out there saying he will veto this bill um, and we can see that if this bill is introduced and it gets all the way to the president we will see what he does but if they do implement new sanctions the president will be left with one option and that is a military strike against Iran and we have to remember that for 30 plus years now Israel Saudi Arabia the US government has been trying to get into Iran and replace uh, and put into place the US dollar as the reserve currency to put all their natural resources to be sold on the US dollar which Iran is not doing at this point and this is what they are trying to do at this time the central banks are trying to maneuver into the area they are trying to infiltrate the banking system and right now they are still in talks and we will have to see how this plays out I believe it's not going to go well it will not end well just like everything else um, we also have to remember they also want Assad out of uh, the government there they're already building cases and other information about Assad the UN has reported uh, that Assad is uh, is being implicated in war crimes and they're bringing this up to the UN they're gonna try to get NATO forces in there to remove him just like they did um, with Gaddafi they use the same tactic CNN is reporting with their secret Intel that Assad has a chemical weapon stash that they hid from the UN inspectors and he is keeping it hidden and who knows some of these could make their way back to the United States but during this 
period of peace talks with Iran. Iran launches a large-scale large-scale war drills in the Persian Gulf. Uh, Iran kicked off a series of large-scale war games on Thursday to test the country's air defenses, fighter jets, and bomber planes in the Persian Gulf region. The technical core of the war drills is to test Iran's air-to-air combat and prowess and targeting and flying objects. And uh, the U.S. was out there saying, really, these war games show not much has changed inside the Islamic Republic. It's business as usual, said Rubin. The war games certainly drive home the point to American allies that Iran is resurgent while America is in retreat. And, of course, they want to implement these new sanctions, and they actually want to get a war started. And this is Saudi Arabia and Israel pushing the senators in this direction because they pretty much pay for their campaign. Now there is a report saying that US might lose interest in being a NATO member if Europe won't increase its defense spending. And this goes on to say that the US might lose interest in being a NATO member if Europe doesn't increase its spending. And um, this is coming from the NATO Secretary General Anders. He urged European countries to put more money in unmanned aerial vehicles, air transportation, and refueling aircrafts in the, in the air. And pretty much they want the defense spending uh, to go at least 2% of each country's uh, GDP. And this is what they're looking for because, again, uh, there is a war coming and they need to really beef up the military defenses. And we see the military defenses being beefed up all around the world. Now, today we understand that Target has just confirmed that 40 million cards tainted by data breach. Now, the data breach happened on November 27th. That was almost a month ago. And this goes on to say that the target customers took place between the end of November and the middle of December. And the breach was thought to have begun around November 27th. And it was brought to a close on December 15th. And pretty much they stole uh, credit card information. And this system, who knows, it could have been the, S the NSA. And, of course, they're going to blame it on somebody else. But this is just out there to let everyone know that these cyber vulnerabilities are there. And they will use this. And we've seen this being built up over two and a half years, where banks were being cyber attacked, where... Um, U.S. government offices were being cyber attacked. They're always blaming it on Iran. They're blaming it on Syria. They're blaming it on China. They blame it on North Korea. They're blaming it on all the nations that hmm, don't use the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency. But anyhow, we know that they are building this propaganda up because when the time comes for this event, which the time is coming, they will have the ability to say, see, we told you it was China. See, we told you it was Iran. They are to blame for the economic collapse. The NSA was just recently on 60 Minutes letting everyone know that um, they thwarted a major cyber attack, which they really didn't do anything. But they're telling everyone they did do this. Um, and they would have collapsed the economy of the United States and the world, and they mentioned this over and over. And this is to brainwash everyone for those people who are still sleeping, um, because when the real attack comes, and Janet, Napol Janet Napolitano told us not if, but when the cyber attack occurs, she was very sure of herself, um, the power grid will be hit, the banks will be hit, and the U.S. economy will completely implode on itself. And this is what we need to expect because this is what is going to happen because they have no way out. And the authorities are actually afraid of the people of the United States. And this is why they are out there trying to disarm the American people. And going forward, they will be 
their whole goal is to remove the Constitution. They're already rewriting it in Common Core, and their whole goal is to remove the Constitution because when they reset the system, which they believe they can do, um, they are going to um, remove the Constitution, and there will be no Constitution. We will have a dumbed-down society. We might, might, we might as well all put on a gray uniform, march into work, march back home, and not even think. And this is what they would like all of us to do. So what is the White House doing at this time? Well, the Secret Service wants to maintain and upgrade, upgrade the 48 ba uh, barriers, bollards, and gates protecting the White House. And the United States Secret Service um, put out a contract. They want it answered by December 23rd. And they want their system that protects the White House um, in operating condition for 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And I'm just thinking to myself, it isn't now. So if it isn't now, I, I, you know, or are they beefing it up? That makes more sense. They're beefing the system up to be ready, to be more secure, and to keep people out of this area when the collapse happens. And the Secret Service has partnered with National Park Service to study the possible renovation and upgrading of the vehicle gate systems surrounding the White House. The contractor shall have the experience and knowledge to integrate new technologies into the existing preventative and corrective maintenance programs. And they want new things, and they want um, uh, new types of components. They want new um, detection systems, they want new infrared sensors, they want new alarm systems, they want new um, actuator arms on all the gains, and they want them reinforced um, so they cannot be pushed open. They want heavier bolts, they want heavier fasteners, they want larger barriers in front of the White House. Now, let me ask you, what are they expecting to happen? Are they expecting the people of the U.S. to run to the White House and to run into it and take the president? What is all the security for? Well, we kind of know what it's for because people have been asking me that I've been talking about um, this event, this false flag event, and we have to remember, it's not just to get us into war. I mean, this, it is to create the um, bank holidays. It is to have the bank balance, because we understand that the, the non-template of Cyprus has now become the template of the Eurozone, Australia, Canada, UK, and um, United States. They are ready. They are ready to push this forward. So when these events do occur, and they are going to occur, you know, the banks are going to shut down. You'll not be able to get your money out. The power is going to go out in many different locations. The president will eventually declare martial law. This is why the barriers and the systems around the White House are being increased. And, of course, they do have their escape plans if things really get out of hand. But we understand when all this occurs, they are going to declare martial law. The FEMA camps are going to be open. They are going to be ushering people into these camps, um, not to protect you, but to keep you contained and to keep an eye on everyone. And this is why if you look at a lot of these camps, the barbed wire is facing inward and not outward. So it's really to keep you in there. And this will occur across the country. And this is why, if you look at the big cities, this is they're, they're telling you right now, Chicago, New York, L.A., they are pushing the gun laws the hardest in these locations because these are the areas, uh, D.C., with the biggest populations. New York City, for instance, has been disarming people continually right now because they passed a 
law which is completely null and void of the Second Amendment. And now these people are getting letters home telling them to turn in their weapon because it holds more than five rounds. The same thing in Chicago and D.C. and most of these cities are now gun-free zones. You can't even get a gun. I was watching John Stossel trying to apply for a gun permit in New York. It was like 15 pages. He had to wait eight months. Then, of course, he's John Stossel. That is the speedy eight months, and he was rejected um, to get a weapon. I think he was able to get a weapon to keep in his apartment, but he could not carry it. Other people reported that they've been waiting a year and a half to get a weapon because what they're doing is they're putting you through this paperwork so you'll never ever get the weapon and this is being done on purpose because the more they limit the amount of weapons the better it will be for the government officials the, the easier it will be for DHS TSA and local authorities to roll into these places where the population is so great it will be easier for them to take the people down and to create order in these areas the outlying areas around the middle of the country are less populated and they are try still trying to work on getting the weapons away from them but in these very big areas where there are millions and millions of people it is much more difficult to control these areas if people are armed because we understand when this event occurs what follows is martial law what follows is the round of people what follows is reading the list of who is a threat and who isn't a threat what follows is um, your children who are in school the the administrators saying who don't know any better saying listen something has just happened we're going to bus these children off to a special area which will be the FEMA camps and if you as the parent want your child you will have to report to the FEMA camp to get them this is how you this is how they are going to lure you into this so the plan would be tell your children if something goes down to meet up in a different place this is what I am telling my children to do because I do not want them getting on the special bus going to a separate location I want them to maneuver their way out of this area to a location where I could get them and move them off and this is what I would suggest everyone should probably do um, uh, to play it safe because they will make this move after this event Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks.